E and M, electricity and magnetism. I got a comment asking me, what's the best way to learn this branch of physics? Now, let me tell you firsthand, this is probably one of the most interesting things you can learn in your classical physics course. It's usually taken at the very end, once you've learned all the important information about kinematics, circular dynamics, wave motion, at the very end, the goody is getting to learn and use all the calculus and skills you've developed in physics to talk about something called electricity and magnetism. And it's a very large topic that covers a lot of different smaller things. Uh, we cover something called electric potential, where we talk about how point charges in space interact with each other. Um, these charges are quantized, which if that word sounds familiar, it's one of the uh, ways that we first started looking at things that are basically not infinitely dividable. For a very long time, it was thought that mass could be infinitely divided into smaller and smaller sections. And something like charge, it turns out, is actually a quanta, which means there is a set limit to the lowest resolution of charge that you can see that you can observe, and it happens to be the charge of a single electron. You can't really, for the sake of the scope of what we're talking about, you can't get like a half of an electron of charge. There is a, a lower limit to the resolution of our universe. And this is where we get to explore some of that. We talk about things called electric potential. We use quite a bit of vector calculus to describe the way the fields of different charges interact. So this is a visualization in 3D space of how charge deforms and, and creates these sort of fields that touch each other and, and interact and push each other away, or in this case, maybe attract each other, which is what these two fields do here. We cover further into things called electrostatics, which cover things like Gauss's law, right here where we have closed surface integrals that can be used to find electric fields. All of this. ENM is a fascinating subject. So if you want to get into it, what I recommend is to pick up this book right here. This is called University Physics by OpenStax. This is a free textbook initiative out of Rice University. Uh, this is volume two. You can pick these up online for free in the sense that you'll get a digital copy. It's on the website. You can go to it. I'll leave a link in the description for this one specifically. And you can read everything. You can download the PDF. But like everything I say, I always recommend picking up a physical copy if you you can. Something about having a book right here to highlight and read through and, and sit on your desk, it just makes it easier, i found, to read and absorb the information. Um, but the book is absolutely fantastic, and it covers quite a few things. This volume right here, all damn near 800 pages of it, are mostly about electricity and magnetism. In the very beginning here, for about 150 pages, we have some information about thermodynamics, which, oddly enough, in your classical physics course, you probably won't talk much about thermodynamics outside of maybe like the kinetic theory of gases, um, but you, you tend to skip through them pretty quick. And then you get to get into the goodies, electricity and magnetism. We talk about Gauss's law, potential, capacitance. These are all ideas relating how charges are put around in, in energy states within space. And it's very important to get a solid background of that because then you get into some really cool information. You get into direct current circuits, which will give you the basis if you're kind of like, like uh, someone who likes to tinker like myself, you can actually go in and learn how to work with circuits with this book, and it'll tell you just enough to make some simple ones. You know, you won't be playing with any ICs or doing a whole lot of Arduino per se, but if you wanted to, you know, set up a couple LEDs, maybe do something, create something called a jewel thief, you will know how to do that uh, from this chapter. And then you get back into the theoretical stuff. So you get into magnetic forces and fields, sources of magnetic fields. The Biot-Sivart law is one of my favorite equations in all of classical physics. It is such a beautiful vector integral, and you can do so much with it. I actually have a sheet that catalogs all the different fields that the Biot-Savar law creates. These are magnetic fields, and what's really cool is they all stem from a single equation, and you plug in different parameters, and you can figure out things like, what does the magnetic field look like in a thin straight wire? We all know there is one, right? Radios operate on this principle that if you run voltage through a wire, you get this magnetic field that actually encircles it, kind of like a like a swirling vortex of, of, of Disrupt, disruption in the electromagnetic field. Um, and there are ways to, to calculate this. You take a vector integral of these things and you get some really interesting results out of it. You can get the arc out of a ring of wire, a loop of wire. Um, you can get something called a solenoid, which is a coil of wire, and then calculate the magnetic field here. This is actually the working principle behind things like rail guns. Uh, so it's very interesting to learn about. And like I said, this all comes out of a single equation. 
at the top, which is the BIOS of Art Law. So very fun, very interesting to learn about. And then finally, you get back into some currents at the end here with inductance, alternating currents. And then finally, electromagnetic waves, which introduces Maxwell's equations, which were some of the uh, really precipice of classical mechanics. They are a set of four beautiful equations. Typically, they're given in something called the gradient form, and this book chooses to give them in the form of an integral. And the reason this is done, let me see if I can go to the page for you. Here they are. The reason this is done, they're given in this closed uh, surface integral format, is so that you can learn a little less vector calculus. So these are kind of like the easy mode version of Math Maxwell's equations. You can use the gradient form, and they're a little bit more concise and a lot of times more useful for certain problems. Uh, but the integral form of these Maxwell's equations are really, really nice uh, because you really only need to know a little bit of vector calculus. So you don't need to know uh, things like curl or div or grad. You can you can just take the very basics of knowing, all right, we've, we've figured out things like Gauss's law. If you go through the book, you figure out things like um, Gauss's law for magnetism, Faraday's law, Ampere's law, and you already know what these laws do. So what the book does is issue just a little bit of a correction to it to align it with Maxwell's equations, which is what Maxwell did uh, back in the early 19th century to, or excuse me, the late 19th century to allow us uh, to facilitate these equations. Um, and so it's all in here, and you can learn so much from this book and it teaches you so much about the beauty of electromagnetism. Like I said, I will link this in the description below so you can get the online copy. Um, there is a lot of calculus in it, so do take your time, brush up on um, some, I'll leave a calculus playlist below for vector calc specifically, um, but it is an absolutely fascinating read to see these things um, you put to life like this, and there's tons of descriptions in here. Again, this is OpenStax. Uh, University Physics Volume 2, and it is it is just such a fun book. I cannot recommend it enough. All right, I think that's all for this one, you guys. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, do like and subscribe if you find this content interesting, and do take a look at our Physics Foundations playlist if you want to eventually get to a point to understand this stuff on your own. We are teaching ourselves physics from the ground up, so I'll leave a link there in the description below, and I will see you there. Take it easy, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.